All right, Dad's pulling, pulling out, out some more Dad. stuff. <laughs> Got a couple white pumpkin seed flasks. It's All 1880s right. right on the bottom. We're down in here. Well, it's about eight feet, almost eight feet to the bottom, I guess. Yeah. Just hit a crier. It's uh, oh. one of the rare, the Springfield the cylinder whiskeys. Said L.S. Ensel Wines and Liquors, Springfield, Illinois, in a slug plate. Oh wow! That'd have huh. been nice. Yeah. Yep. That was broke. And we got a nice uh, Shiloh's Consumption Cure, 1880s. Yeah. And a nice hand-blown whiskey flask from St. Louis. It's a A.M. A. Hellman. It's got the metal lid. It was an older hand-blown one. Yeah. All right. And. Uh, Ah, uh, McMonagle and Rogers premium fruit flavors. And last but not least, I got a cup, coffee cup and saucer. <laughs> All right. They're both 1880s, got a nice back mark on the saucer. So, yeah. All right, this is being real productive then. It sure is. I got me a little shelf built there so I can step up here. But, yep. There's still, let me see if there's anything else down there. I think I, I, think I had anything else showing. On the bottom, like 1880s for sure on that bottom down there. We'll take that. That might be about it for the bottom. Big coffin oh, flask. Oh, big coffin flask. Oh, it's got a crack, but yeah, that was a great big thing. Right. Oh, hey, there's an embossed druggist. GA Hewlett Dispensing Druggist, Franklin Building. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a Springfield bottle. That's sure fairly scarce. Yeah. All right. We don't hit many druggists in our jug dump, so no. it's kind of nice to dig privies hit some drugstores, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a horseradish bottle. All right, I got to clean out here a little bit. All right. Finish up. Well, that's a nice pile of bottles you yeah, got there. Pile, aren't we? All, right. All right, just about to finish up down there, about eight feet to the bottom. Just got one little corner to go, but I had to come out. I was going to show what Paul had got. Anyway, I hit this come off the bottom as a nice old Bixby, one of the older 1880s uh, Bixby shoe polish bottles. Still had part of the cap. This was a nice Sanford's ink. Boss Sanford's on the bottom, great big one. There's a big quart coffin flask. I think it's got Illinois Glass Company on the bottom. I don't know what this is. Something all encrusted, but it's got a brass, little brass knob on it. Kind of cool. And a panel look like a cologne bottle. There's a push rod for a syringe. A nice old applied blob top beer bottle. It's unembossed. And an applied blob top mineral water, green. And the coolest thing down in there in the bottom was this druggist from uh, Wisner, Nebraska. It's really neat. It's got the guy's name on it. I can't make it out exactly. But it's got a, looks like an eagle on a mortar and pestle. Really nice. That came out down that bottom 1880s stuff. So anyway, we're pretty excited about that. Let's go see what Paul got over here. You know he's doing down here. Oh, he's way down in there too. Still yeah, hitting anything? Some bottles sticking out down hey, there. Hey, all right. Just found a marble, but right wow, here let me was show. Some, there was a thing with some doll legs. Oh, cool! Look at that. It's encrusted in there. Yeah, look at that. It's encrusted in there. Here's an old clock. Yeah. Part of a face of a clock. There's an yeah, amber. There's a broken statue. Here. Oh, that'd have been awesome. 
Uh, uh, Castoria. Handle to something. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice rope twist handle. There's a hey, this is cool. Lizy. Lizy Maltese from Peoria. Those are fairly scarce. Yeah. That's a nice one, Paul. Got some other little bottles here. Hey, look at that. Neat little doll punch cup. Little pressed glass punch cup there. Um, all right, that's neat. Cool stuff. Oh yeah, you got several bottles down there, don't you? Yeah. Been hiding them, them Castorias. Yep. <laughs> Whiskey flask. There's that oh, Castoria. That oh, it's broke. Now that okay. ruined our day. We might as well go home now. Can't recover oh, ourselves. That one's broke too. Oh. Nothing on it, at least. Yeah, it's hand blown. Yeah, he's got a nice little layer down in there. All right. Oh man, it just looks so good, doesn't it, with all that rust? And yeah. Lots of dishes and. It's real trashy. We love them like that. Look at that. There's another. Looks like a whiskey flask. Yeah, unfortunately they're not oh. real old. But... Well, hey, they'll probably turn purple though. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing about it. There's a bunch of them. Wow, yep. Boy, oh boy. Oh, there was a... That head, doll doll head. head, bisque one, yep. Yep. Sure was. Oops. Man, that would have been nice. Well, they definitely had kids, didn't they? Just the neck of it. Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's a lid. Oh. Hey, is it whole? I think it's whole. All right, look at that. Nice the, press pattern. The, pre the decoration is on the inside. The inside surface. That's yeah. kind of neat. Wow, that's a nice design too. Look at that. That's pretty. That was like a uh, butter dish, covered dish of some kind. Is what is that? Is that a big beer? Oh, oh come on. It's Nothing slick, on it. Hand man. blown. Oh. Root uh, on the bottom. Yep. Wow, that could have been something really cool. Yeah, it was made in the Root Glass Company over in Terre Haute. Wish I'd been a nice Terre Haute soda bottle. There's the other side of that plate. Oh, look at that. Got well, both pieces. Unfortunately, it looks like just a plain old green, yep. green plate. Big bone. It means anything to anybody. <laughs> of course, you get all the pieces of them things that ain't no good. Wow, it's still going down in there, isn't it? Another whiskey. <laughs> oh, there's stuff sticking out of the side walls. And... Yeah, oh, this spot wow. here is real heavy trash. You know, that hole of mine, it was uh, it was deeper in the middle of the hole. Hey, is that hole? Oh, look oh, at it that. Is. Look at that. That's, That's pretty. It sure is. Look at that. Blue transfer wow. printed. Yeah, that's a great big old casserole lid. Yeah, I don't see anything that wrong with it. It looks perfect to me. Handles good. Huh. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Real pretty flowers on it. Yeah, yeah somebody's going to need that. We might need it. We might have a casserole that needs that lid. That's a real pretty pattern. Yeah. All right, man. It's really loaded right here. Uh, wow. Might actually be a hand digger, but okay. I've got one right here. Stopper. Asking you shall receive. I've got one in my back pocket right here. Shelly. Shelly can't be with us, but All right. her digger can. And hey, a stopper, yeah. yeah. That's a stopper for like a Larkin or a little cologne bottle. Oh, look at the whiskeys. A lot more hand blown stuff now, Paul. Yeah. You notice that? Yeah. back a little bit yeah i think it just dropped back enough years back early 1900 oh there was uh -oh. a clear jar <laughs> yeah that'd have been nice i don't know what that is oh that's a uh, looks like a siphon for a uh, or like an atomizer type thing yeah it looks oh, like there's a, a doll arm 
Hey. And a little wheel. Oh, look at that. The kids thing. Yeah, that was an iron wheel for, for a little toy. Boy, we're hitting a lot of interesting stuff here. Let's see, I'm going to put these over here and get these out of our way. So nothing evil befalls them. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I think that's a that's a top of a that's an atomizer off a cologne bottle. See, it's threaded on the inside there. Won't be able to use that still. Yeah. Big, big druggist. Oh, oh man, that'd have been sweet, wouldn't it? Of course, it's perfectly oh, whole. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's a big pint size one there. Looks like. Man, oh man, that'd have been a nice boss one. At least it was whole. Boy, there's just stuff straight Is down it? and getting All thicker. Right. Man, it's looking really good. Yeah, I'll have to dig out some oh, of it. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and pass the gravy. I'll take the stopper oh, on it's that. a stopper. And put it in this other one. Yep. Boy, howdy, this is great. I love it. It's being productive. Yeah. Hey, we got back-to-back -back good digs here, man. We're doing good. Keep that going, keep our streak alive. We may not get back to the jug dump for a while. And just a little slick. Yep. It's fun. So far the rains have held off. It's supposed to rain today. Oh, that's a nice big one. Yep, pipe size. Yeah. <laughs> oh, broken milk. No. Oh, there's a, like a hair piece. That's what it is. That's a woman's hair hair piece there. Look at that tortoise shell. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's a statue. Oh, it's oh, it's it broke, but it's pretty cool looking. Oh, all right. It's got kids on it. Oh, that's a little uh, black boy, I think, going into the outhouse. That's what it looks like, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, yeah, but he's... there's another, there's somebody in there on the toilet. Yeah, they're in there. That's cool. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Even though it's broke, that's still yeah. really cool. Well, it's not, uh-oh, my battery's going dead. Exchange battery. All right, our battery went dead, and I, hopefully I got a backup battery. Hopefully it's got enough juice. I don't know when it ran out. I don't know what we were showing. We were, we had just dug, he just dug this one out. It's real cool what it is. It's got the top broke on it. It was like a vase, but it had a, a little black boy looking in the outdoor toilet, old privy. And if you look closely, his sister or somebody's inside there. <laughs> see yeah, inside there, you can't hardly see it. And a lot of the paints wore off, but they originally they were black. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. There's the door to the old outhouse. You see, we'll clean it up, but he's still pulling them out. Wow. Got a lot of these half pint whiskeys. More slick druggists. Did hit. What did he hit here a minute ago? Oh, here it is. It's a nice Larkin. Kind of a bigger size Larkin, hand blown. Larkin Company Buffalo. All right. Back down to hitting bottles there. Oh, that's bottom right there. Is that it? Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, you don't want to see bottom. No. We like for this to keep going and going. Yep. But he's found several marbles. I found a couple marbles we'll show later. Oh, there's a little bitty one. There's a little tiny marble. We just stick them in our pockets so we don't lose them. Glass stopper. Oh, I'll show it here later. Uh, yeah, there's another marble. Well, you definitely went in the marble race today. Yeah. Well, I was putting up a slick uh, food bottle, wide mouth food bottle, and I was dumping the dirt out of it. And out came the little piece of that ABC uh, child's tumbler that I hit earlier on. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it was in there. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, is that a marble? No, it's a Thompson's eye water. All right. Dr. Thomp Thompson's Eye Water. Yep. In New London, Connecticut. Hand blown. Hey, man, we'll take them. Oh, you hit this. 
Oh, that's slick too, man. Yeah, that's nice. Dr. Thompson's Eye Water, New London, Connecticut. Yep. Nice little bottle, Paul. Get this highly embossed beer bottle. <laughs> Contents about 12 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome>. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so correct today, getting yourself in trouble. Contents about 12 ounces. You don't really know. Water. Yep, I'm about done with my hole too, so. Quite a few marbles I was finding here. Yeah. We just gotta kinda go through it. Yeah. A little bit. That's a good way to do it. See how Paul's throwing that dirt up and lets it run back, and if there's any marble in there, it kinda yeah, rolls out. Yeah, see these little ones I found. Yeah, little peewees, maybe. Call them. Well, we've got shooters and peewees. Yeah. We don't dig marbles very often, but when we do, we dig them, don't we? we yeah. Don't They're almost all chinas and crocker, crockery marbles, aren't they? Yep. Stoneware or whatever. Clay. Now, if anybody sees a marble roll out, holler. Tell us. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be trying to listen. Yeah, we'll have to come back and redig the hole. Yep, we'll have to redig it if we don't get them. <laughs> oh, one. there's two right there. Two oh, marbles. Oh, there sure is. Yeah. <laughs> nice little marble spot there. <coughs> yep. Two more little marbles. Stocking up on They're them. right close to the bottom. Yeah, they are. They settled down in there, didn't they? Well, it makes you wonder if some little kids threw them down in there and watch them splatter. Huh? <coughs> Oriental Japanese like teacup. Okay. Now we're both getting hungry, <coughs> but we're kind of wanting to finish these up before it rains. Bottom of the privy. Yeah, this is right in the corner, too. Yeah. That nice defined wall there. Square it off. Yeah, going, oh, there's another marble. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of white ones, isn't there? Yeah. All right. Yeah, see, he's right in the corner there. Can you see where he's yep, at? Yep, there's there? still some wood left. Yep. Like the wood corner post, like a four by four. There's, there's another one. <laughs> I was gonna say if you didn't see that one, I was gonna say, oh, there's, there's another one next oh, to it. Oh, two of them, yeah. <laughs> there, like they're glazed, glazed china marble. Yeah. Look at all them, yeah. That's cool. Put them in the pocket, I guess. Oh, we're in the marble business here. We're gonna have Eric Markley coming over. Up, oh, there's another, there's another one, right one back behind that bottle. Eric Markley, the marble man. Have him over. If he was here today. He'd probably help us sift this. Yep, well, that's right on bottom. Yep, that's it. You can see that hard, hard packed clay bottom. There's a root growing across the bottom here. Yep. There he is. See how Paul dug that? He finished up that corner there. Now he's throwing dirt back into that so you don't have to throw that out. Now you can just backfill into that area. He's worked that area out. We call that a worked out area. There's another marble. There's right on the bottom. Wow, man. Yeah, there were several of them there. Did they, those marbles go through their system? I know, uh, it makes you or wonder, don't Or did they it? throw them in here? Yeah, that's a good thought. They did not like to waste the marbles. No. They didn't have a lot of could, games and entertainment. Some so. little kid could have ate those. <laughs> Passed them through, man. You know how babies are. Babies always have been curious. Yep. Luna and Luna are like that. Boy, they see something. They, it's got to go in their mouth, you know. Oh, that's right in the clay. 
Shelly and I had them over the other day and they were so, so fun. We were playing and stuff, there's a couple little pieces of something fell on the floor and boy they were both after it like a race. There's another marble. <laughs> hard stuff. Well, I think folks have watched enough marbles here. They can go over and watch Rock's Cousteau dig marbles or something, but we're gonna we're gonna get back to digging some bottles and I'm gonna run over there and finish that hole, Paul. And All right, well, it won't take me long going. to finish this. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. Hey, you might come up with a whole bunch of marbles yet. Yeah. What if the other side there was a big bag of them or something? All right, well, if you see anything interesting, holler and I'll come back right, over. I sure will. I'm going to jump down in here and finish this off. I'm only about 12, 15 feet away from Paul, I guess. All right, so I'm going to jump down in there. I don't think I'm going to record anymore. I'm just going to get it done and we'll fill it in. We'll come back when we see something interesting. Okay, down to the bottom of my hole to finish out here. Just Pulled this one out. It's a Mellon's Infants Food, Dahlberg Goodale and Company from Boston. It's one of the older ones from like the maybe the late 1880s. Nice old hand blown Mellon's Food. Hit a coffin flask, get a little uh, Coney Ink or Mucilage bottle. And it does have the glass mark on the bottom, IG Co., which is Illinois Glass Company. And that was a good illustration. Now, this is the one that was made in Alton, and the other one with an L behind it was made in Pittsburgh different glass company but all right well hey one of the last bottles down in the very corner here it's probably a broken or un or probably a hostetters but it's a nice square amber so let's see what it is together and hit yep it's another hostetters but it's all right it's a nice older one looks like another applied lip one yep just like the other one ig company l so that's the imson glass company limited so, yeah, that's all right. Second nice old applied lip hostetters. Just going to dig around in there a little bit, and that's about it. And there might be a couple more up here. There's this fruit jar and a couple bottles here. But you can see the wood wall here, what's left of it. You can see there how straight that is and smooth. Yep. Well, it's not so smooth up and through there. I didn't dig that all out. But, oh, I'm just sitting down in here and kind of reliving the past. Just thinking of somebody that... Drank that bottle of Hostetters back in the 1870s or 80s and threw it down here. And, you know, this is the first that anybody's seen that bottle since 1880s. Isn't that amazing? I don't know, that just fascinates me. You know, whoever used these bottles, a little Melon's Infant's food there. Some little boy or little girl eating that food. and Somebody used some ink here and drank a half pint bottle of whiskey. Just all fascinating. <laughs> so. All right, that's it for my hole. Done. You can see part of the square walls down there. And on the bottom, hit this nice little creamer. It's got the bottom in it. Whoop, there it went. I think that'll glue in there all right. Hit another Larkin bottle as I was coming out. Hit a couple of these things. A mother's friend. Trying to hurry because it looks like it's going to rain here any minute. Another pumpkin seed flask and uh, little food bottles, some other stuff here. A uh, uh, little child's cup. That was kind of cute. Paul hit a few other little goodies over here. Let's see what he hit. He's just finishing up too, aren't you? Yep, I got all the walls. Wall to wall, I guess. Okay, another little, a nice little doll there. Yeah, I Some might have found and... enough arms and legs to go. Oh yeah, look with at that. that. Doll. I'm not sure. Hey, look at that, a teething ring. Looks like a little hard rubber teething ring. That's some kind of a little ball a or pair. something. Yeah. Like... Old rubber ball. There's a milk, a pint milk. Illinois dairy, yep. another trask. Light ball. Hey, cool. That's a pretty clean Wow, ring. that is clean. Yeah, probably an old Edison Mazda bulb. A couple of them there. Listerine. Yep, that was in the corner. Oh, wow, yeah. That's about it. A lot of oh, slips, cool. but man, overall it was real good. It was a good hole. Well, 
I think we got done just in the nick of time because I feel almost rain coming. It's getting so. darker all of a sudden. It's getting dark. <laughs> it's getting dark and the wind's starting to pick up. So. Yeah, I think it's time to fill this in. We're going to fill them in and get something to eat. Yeah. All right. Finally got everything cleaned up. And Paul and I dug yesterday afternoon. You saw the first part and the second part of our video. This will be the finish uh, and the cleanup. So I've been washing for quite a while here to get these done. Paul's got a gig tonight, so he had to, all four of the kids. So he's, his hands were full and Shelly's working. So I had to do this all on my own. So, <laughs> but Anyway, uh, we had a good fun day and we appreciate you watching. And we'll talk about a few of these things here. Probably my favorite thing that we got for the day was this little child's cup. And uh, it's got the ABCs around it. As you can see, and there's a little dog. And there's a lion. And there's an elephant. And we were digging later on, and we actually found the piece that goes into that uh, chip there. And I'm just letting it dry right now because it's still wet, but I was going to glue it back in there, but... Anyway, that's pretty cool, and uh, we got the other piece that was actually inside of a food bottle <laughs> later on when I was digging, so thought that was interesting there, but yep, little child's uh, mug, so yeah, pretty neat, nice, colorful, and this was one of our nicer bottles, it's a real cool looking uh, drugstore bottle from Wisner, ne Nebraska. And it's got the guy's name up there, Howe, I believe it is, C.W. Howe, Druggist. And it's got like an eagle on a mortar and pestle and a ribbon. Just a real nice 1880s uh, pharmacy bottle. And that was down near the bottom of that hole, you know, with some of the older stuff. So, anyhow, it looks like it's in nice shape. So, all right. So that'll probably go out to somebody in Nebraska. Nice 1880s drugstore bottle. And a mother's friend. I believe we got one of these last time also. It was for women. And I didn't clean this stuff out of there. For any of you bottle diggers, you know what I'm talking about. You don't mess with that stuff. A mother's friend. Whatever that was. And it reminds me of Scott's Emulsion and Milk's Emulsion. There was some other stuff. If it's got the word emulsion in it, uh, leave it alone. <laughs> don't get your brush in that. But uh, that was for women. So anyway, it's about a $20 bottle. Uh, the drugstore bottle, I really don't know. That's probably at least 30 bucks, maybe 40 maybe more. I don't know. That's a pretty cool bottle. And a little pale green Bixby bottle, patented 1883. It says Bixby on the bottom. Still has part of the original brush inside of there. And uh, that'd be a $20 bottle. This is a Shiloh's Consumption Cure. Not real boldly embossed. I don't even know if you can see that or not, but uh, but that's from Leroy, New York. It's an 1880s bottle, and that bottle actually had uh, morphine in it, which makes sense because later on you'll see we dug a bunch of morphine bottles out of there, so somebody definitely had an addiction problem. And we got a pair of these uh, Hostetter Stomach Bitters. Both of these have applied lips on them, and it's from IG Company L on the bottom. That one's going to have nice iridescence, as you can see, from being in the ground. Can you see that? I just love it. It's like nature's artwork. It's real pretty. So we like that when we find them with nice iridescence, just from being in the wet soil for over 100 years. Uh, there's a nice little Dr. Thompson's Eye Water, New London, Connecticut. Paul pulled that one out of his hole. A little hand-blown eye bottle. That's a $20 bottle. These Hostetters are probably about $30 a piece. This one with the iridescence probably bring a little bit more because of that. This one might have good iridescence under it, but right now it's just kind of like a white haze. But I believe that a lot of that's going to flake off and it might be iridescent also, but it's the old IG Company L from Imson Glass Company out of Pittsburgh. This is a fairly scarce bottle. Uh, A.M. Hellman and Company, St. Louis. Boy, the sun angle. I have trouble with that. See how much you can see that or not. But anyhow, that's an 1890s flask, and it's still got the original uh, lead or pewter 
top on there. I unscrewed it. I got it off of there. It screws back on real nice. And that's 30 or 35, maybe $40 bottle. Paul pulled this one out. As I showed earlier you know, when we were digging. John Wyatt and Brother, it says. And it's got the dose cap on there. And it says, take next dose at. And this little rib around the neck here. And then it's got an arrow pointing up. And you can turn this cap. It was designed where you could turn it to the hours of the day. You see it's got the hours on there from 1 to 12. So isn't that cool? That's a $30 bottle. This is one of our oldest bottles we hit. Oh boy, the sun angle ain't going to be good for us here, is it? But it says Lubin Perfumer Paris. And uh, we actually got the stopper. And it's a ground panel. And it was probably from 1860s, 1870s. Might have been around a while. But a uh, nice little bottle. That's about a $30 bottle. Paul pulled this out. It was a stoneware like a marmalade or a jam jar and it says WP Hartley Liverpool and London and it's got like the little tower or whatever that is it's got a picture of something on there but I believe those came with like uh, preserves in it marmalade that'd be worth $25 imagine alright we come down here we got three little drugstore bottles all from Springfield uh, this one, although it doesn't say Springfield, G.A. Hewlett Dispensing Druggist Franklin Building. Uh, that bottle is from Springfield. The Franklin Building was located in Springfield, Illinois. There was another one, Robert Clarkson Modern Druggist, Springfield, Illinois. It dates from after turn of the century, after 1900. And uh, I had a whole big collection of those. Had about every one there is known. Some of them say 20th Century Pharmacy on them. From Robert Clarkson. There's Clarkson and Mitchells. And this is a, actually a scarce bottle. John W. Cobb's Drug Company. It is a Springfield bottle. And this is a very hard bottle to find in this size. With just John W. Cobb's Drug Company on it like that. Cute little bottle. Alright. Lysi Malt Ease. It says Lysi on the shoulder. And then Malt Ease Peoria, Illinois. A little hand-blown bottle. That's probably worth 30 bucks. From the early 1900s. Another beer bottle next to it. Terre Haute Brewing Company. Terre Haute, Indiana. Again, it's a hand-finished crown top bottle. And that might bring 20 bucks because of the size. We'll see. And an amber 1880s applied blob top beer. And I don't know if you can see it, but the top is kind of crudely applied on that and there's no name on it. it's got a number four on the bottom but I think it's got some iridescence also but nice color anyhow and another beer bottle Reich beer Springfield Illinois that's a machine made bottle probably around 1918 probably right before prohibition but uh, they get about twenty dollars out of those yeah, green mineral water bottle it's got a crude applied lip on that one, and it just says HH on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's H High or Hay out of Bremen. I don't know what the company that was, HH. Maybe somebody knows. But it's from 1880s. Paul pulled this one out. Cobalt Blue. UD Company on the bottom. United Drug Company. They became the Rexall chain. Rexall pharmacies and drugstores that had a medicine in it similar to this cobalt wyeth for a stomach you know an <clears throat> effervescent type thing kind of like Alka-Seltzer this one come out of the hole I dug it's an older 1880s melons infants food from Dahlberg Good Ale Company from Boston sounds glaring too bad here isn't it that's a nice old bottle and they're worth about 20 bucks. Paul pulled both of those out. A pair of milk bottles. This one's a little half pint Illinois Dairy. And then he also got the pint size. Property of Illinois Dairy. He's got the old Thatcher Manufacturing Company glass mark on the bottom. And uh, those are probably 25 or 30 dollars a piece. This is cute. It's a little child's cup. 
the flowers on gold washed inside got the handle broke off but maybe somebody can make a toothpick holder out of it <laughs> something anyway but oh we got a bunch of other just miscellaneous stuff here all kinds of little doodads um, got several Larkin bottles these are uh, dental uh, like a liquid uh, dentifrice is what was in these and that one still got the original top you see and they could shake it out of there it was a liquid uh, tooth uh, tooth wash basically there's another larger Larkin company bottle out of Buffalo uh, California fig syrup and we got several cool looking things this is really pretty it's a lid you can see it's a real nice designs on it cannot remember what pattern that is I've had couple lamps with that pattern but it's, it's printed around on the inside of the glass inside surface but that was probably a lid for a, a butter dish you know dome butter dish or a serving bowl but it's perfect that was really neat and also Paul dug that out of there it's a nice blue transfer printed lid with beautiful roses flowers on it and it's just got I think a couple little small chips on the back side there not bad at all it's real nice but that's probably from 1890s maybe 1880s real pretty and a Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound you can tell there was women involved there with it with children because there was those we got uh, broken dolls and doll parts uh, marbles we got a whole thing of marbles here for those of you that like marbles uh, no glass they were all all crockery China marbles a lot of small ones Paul found that great big shooter there, a big brown one. And I found the blue one that was actually in my hole, but a lot of white ones he, he found down in there. Paul found almost all of them down in the bottom of that hole. A little painted one there, but yeah, that was kind of cool. Oh, there's an old straight razor. We dug one the last time, too. Yeah, it was pretty bad shape, but that's what it was, an old straight razor with black hard rubber handles. There's a cup and saucer. Might even be able to use that thing. <laughs> so the uh, saucer had a nice back back mark on it. I'll show that T. Furnival and Son, Cobridge and Staffordshire, and it's got an impressed mark there. So I don't know that one might date from 1870s or 80s. But, yeah, it's it's stained, but still pretty cool. And a little hand medical company. It was for children, probably a medicine. That was just a creamer and had the bottom inside of it. It's broken, but I'm going to glue it back. But it's interesting, you can still see the yellow paint on the pattern. I tried to be careful when I was cleaning it, but you can see the yellow stain on that, on the little thumbprints. But it was a nice uh, pressed pattern glass uh, creamer. But it'll glue back together nicely. And we got some coffin flasks. Here's a little small half pint, and these are like quart sizes two of the big quart ones and um, that one has a, a diamond on the bottom might have had an eye in there I'm not sure but anyway that's a that's probably an 1880s coffin flask or some people call them shoe fly or whatever all right we've got some other oddities here Paul's little toy punch cup for children nice press pattern um, this is that uh, condom tin I was telling you about you see little concentric rings and here's one I just happen to have this one in my eBay store right now but you see it's got the same little concentric rings on the bottom and the lid has uh, three merry widows and had their names Agnes Mabel and Becky <laughs> and there was actually uh, three condom tin three condoms in there so I don't know this will slide by YouTube's uh, sensors or not I probably get spanked for that like I did everything else but anyway, I'm just going to show that because it's a historical uh, little thing there. And sometimes you find these, you find a whole bunch of them if you're digging behind a brothel house of ill repute. And there's a, a woman of the house. There was her piece, of, one of her combs. It's actually all there. And it's a uh, tortoise shell. I don't know if you can see, we call it tortoise shell. It's kind of like a plastic type material, celluloid. <clears throat> but it's real pretty. Tortoise shell material. You know, color. Uh, it was a push rod for a big glass syringe, and uh, 
piece of a hot water bottle uh, bulb for it. And a couple of the dolls. There's a cute one there. With a nice hand painted facial features on that. And that's something still come out so nice after being in the ground 100 years. So that was kind of cool. And this one all dug these, I think. But uh, that one's got some kind of a mark on it there. But all right. There was a little baby's teething ring. Or that one could be for a horse uh, tack. They had these little rings, you know, on horse uh, collars and, you know, bridles and stuff. But could have been a child's teething ring also. There was a pocket knife. Isn't that cool? It's all rusted. I'm sure I can't salvage it, but it's kind of nice mother of pearl thing with a little brass mark there on it. It's a nice pocket knife. Some glass stoppers out of these whiskey bottles. There's some more doll parts. These were probably the legs and arms from this doll. Paul found them, so I imagine that's what those are. There's a salt shaker. Yeah, nice old design on that. Hand blown, ground lip. Paul pulled this out also. This is cool. It's a, it's a little outhouse. You can see the outhouse door there. And there's a little boy opening up the door. And there's somebody in there, you see. I don't know if you can look down from above. But this was like a little planter, like a little vase, and it's just cool. And these were pretty popular back around the turn of the century, 1890s. There's the back of the outhouse. You see the board material. And the little boy's looking around the side there, peeking in. Somebody's in there. Go away. <laughs> I've dug these before. It said next or get in line or something like that. they got some kind of little captions on them. All right, back to bottles. There's an old Listerine bottle, hand-blown. One of the first ones. Here was a McMonagall and Rogers Premium Fruit Flavors from Middletown, New York. So, yeah, not a real rare bottle, but interesting. There's a cologne bottle, just panels. This is cool, a little child's ball. And you can still see the, uh, the pattern on it. See the crisscrossing lines? There's a little rubber ball, and it's... It's become brittle and hard, but I thought that was kind of interesting. It's over 100 years old, that's for sure. There's an ink bottle there it's sitting on. Here's another one of them caps. We didn't find another one of the bottles. That's a dose cap for that John Wyeth bottle. Paul found an extra one. Never found the other bottle. This was, I believe, one of those uh, horse rosettes. I can't see what it is. It's too far gone uh, material, but... I believe that's what that was. It might have had a tree or a, something on the inside of that. There's a atomizer. You can see the threaded collar there. That would have threaded onto the top of a uh, cologne. You know what? I don't, I don't know, it almost looks like a foam thing, doesn't it? That might have... I don't know what that is. It looks... I thought it was an atomizer. It screws on the top of a cologne bottle, but that thing there almost looks like the receiver of a telephone. Like that screwed on to something else, like a telephone candy container or something. And I just now thought of that. This lid came out down in old stuff. I'm not sure. It has no name on it, but it was some kind of a jar lid. Alright. Vaseline bottles there. A couple of amber uh, half pint whiskeys. These are pumpkin seed whiskeys here. You can see the, we call them pumpkin seed flasks. Nice design. We got a couple of pints and a little half pint one there. Paul got three of these A Trasks ointments. And this Coney came out of the 1880s stuff. It's got the IG Company on Boston on the bottom of it for Illinois Glass Company. That's from Alton, Illinois. Alright. And an nice old big size Sanford's Inks, it says on the bottom. Hand blown 1890s. And uh, most of this is like 20 bucks a piece, you know, for a lot of that kind of stuff. We've been selling these pumpkin seeds. We turn them amethyst. Get about $25 a piece for them. Here's our morphine bottles. There's 14 of them we got <laughs> that were good. At least that I washed up. There's a whole box of clear slicks and things I didn't clean up. But anyhow, there's Horlix malted milk. There's a light bulb. There's one of the old hand blown light bulbs. It might still work. Looks like it's pretty good on the inside, but anyway, that's about it. We 
Sure appreciate you watching. Thank you for your patience with us. We <clears throat> we got a lot going on, and as you can see, the leaves are starting to come down. So got a lot of just gutter work. Got a lot of things around the house to do, and winterizing the vehicles and houses. And <laughs> but we're trying to get some videos out when we can. We sure appreciate your prayers for Paul, and uh, thank you for all of you for your kind comments. And we'll try to get to as many as we can. I. Um, just appreciate you so much. We love all of you, and we just need to keep praying for our country, uh, things that are going on. We need to keep reaching out to, to people that are hurting, those who are suffering, those who have lost loved ones. And, and But we thank you for watching, and we'll be back with another video here as soon as possible. So we hope that the rest of you have a good, great weekend, the rest of the weekend. Hope all of you have a good weekend. <laughs> And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.